Hello community. So there's still a little bit of a quarrel about pre-training, fine-tuning and ICL. Whereas the borderline, how is it defined on GPT-X system? So a one minute video to clarify for once and for all. Pre-training. Whenever you pre-train, you have about 1000 H100 Tensor Core GPUs from NVIDIA each with eight gigabyte, you train this on minimum thousand to 10,000 hours, and you have a data set that is about a tenth of the internet. And if you run this on, for example, Microsoft Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, it will cost you about $10 million for a GPT 3.5 system. When you send 10 million to Microsoft, you know that you pre-trained a GPT system. In the process of pre-training, all weights, all the parameters of the layers of the, of the stack are modified. The system inherently pre-trains. Next step, fine-tuning. Fine-tuning is task-specific. So you can fine tune for task one, fine tune for task two, and you can fine tune for a task that's called question and answer. Now, regarding GPT 3.5 system, for example, you need as a computer infrastructure, 10 tensor core GPU from A or H100, 80 gigabyte each. You have about 100 hours in the cloud. You have a data set that is specific formatted for the task. If you have a Q and an A task, you have question one, answer one, question two, answer two, up to question one million, answer one million. You have a huge task specific data set and it will cost you, I guess, about $5,000 to $10,000. If you send a check of five to ten thousand dollars to Microsoft, you fine tune the GPT system with a significant amount of training data for one specific task. You can go on afterwards and fine tune for a second task for sentiment analysis, for example. Or you go and say, hey, for summarization, can I do a fine tuning for summarization? I provide you with my company data on summarization and please fine tune the model. All weights, all parameter of our transformer architecture will be modified. All transformer blocks are modified and the knowledge is encoded in our neural network. This was fine tuning. And then we have in context learning, ICL. In context learning is the system is running, you are sitting in front of your computer and you are running an inference. So you have a prompt and you ask something. And if you put before your question, you put a set of examples or a set of information. This is what we call in context learning to the computer. You are able to learn the computer a very tiny amount of a specific information. This is pre-training, fine-tuning, and ICL. Please do not mix it. If you want to know about, about the cost, here in my last video about Azure OpenAI, I showed you if you want to fine-tune models, they have already here the prices out. So let's go, we go for a text DaVinci 003 model. If you have, I don't know, 100,000 documents in your company and you want to fine tune a DaVinci model from uh, Azure on your company specific data set for summarization, for example, you have to provide training data. Now, per 1,000 tokens, you pay this. If you have, I don't know, 100,000 documents with a uh, 1000 sentences each and each sentence has eight words and let's say each word has three tokens you know what you're gonna pay just for the token then you have to pay the computer infrastructure because it has been computed i told you fine tuning we modify all the complete 
layer architecture, the weights in each transformer block. So training per compute hour for a DaVinci, about $84. And then you have the model and you want to host the model and this costs here for DaVinci about $3 an hour. So you get the idea how this is going to work. I was asked to explain it differently. Okay. Instead of an artificial intelligence, let's take an organic intelligence, and this is me. So my pre-training was cool. When I was 10 years old, I went for eight years to the gymnasium here in Austria. So eight years pre-training. Then with age 18, I went to the university. I fine-tuned my organic intelligence, my beautiful brain, on one specific task, and this was physics. So after five years, you have a data set that is task-specific, everything from mathematics, everything from mechanics, everything from, from quantum electrodynamics, quantum field theory, everything, only physics, fine-tuned for one particular downstream task physics. You can go and study parallel or afterwards mathematics. You fine-tune your organic intelligence on another task. So four to five years. And then I have ICL here, also in my life. When I'm on the job and I'm in communication with my colleagues, every day I learn a little tiny bit of new information. It is not that I go back to university and I go there for one year, no. This on-the-job learning, this continuous learning, if you want, is kind of an analogon to in-context learning for an uh, artificial intelligence system, for a generative AI, if you take a ChatGPT or a Flan T5 model, or whatever will come our way. So just to show you, to understand the basic build, building blocks, pre-training, fine-tuning, ICL. And what else? Yes, the last one. If you have ICL, I told you, you have a certain template structure. So you have a source sequence and a target sequence, and you give as a source sequence, you can give a question and an answer, or if you want that the system learns more, you give a question, the context, a chapter of a book about this specific question you have and an answer. And this is then fed into the artificial intelligence system and depending on your input sequence, the length of your input sequence, you have this 10 times this sequence or 100 times this sequence. So you can provide now in this on the job everyday learning here, where you just run inference, new information to the system. And quite some viewers of mine ask, but hey, if I have to my question already the answer, why should I ask the system for the answer? Now you see the interesting part is that if you have a question, if you have an answer and you provide this to the system, the system learns this. And if you are the first who provides this piece of information and you have a public LLM, everybody that comes after you and has the same question will get the answer you put in the system. Is this a way to manipulate or determine an answer? Is this a way that you could rewrite history? Is this a way that you could influence opinions or facts or trending for the future? Well, I guess you have to answer yourself. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was some clarification and I see you in my next video.